how to create one year of content calendar. There is a strategy that I'm trying to follow in order to create one year of calendar, uh, one year of content calendar or content ideas that I can use to create content. So the first step in the process is to ask yourself how many content you plan to publish a year. So if I use myself as an example, um, I like to publish 52. Let's say I like to publish uh, one content a week. And that one content a week, having 52 weeks a year, that is 52 content a year. And one content a week includes one blog article related to that content, one video content published on YouTube, and at least one pin published on Pinterest to market the blog article related to that content. So three platforms uh, publish one content on three platforms a week. So that's 52 content for the year. The next step is to ask yourself how to choose your content category. So um, every one might have a different um, strategy, but my content category um, is based on what I'm passionate about. Uh, my skills and pretty much what I'm working on, project or goal wise. So, for instance, my husband and I uh, is more my idea uh, to reach our financial independence, and we are taking some steps, implement some strategy to reach that goal. And what that entail, I create content to share the uh, information for other people to benefit from those tips. So finance is included and that, that's how my content categories are selected. Finance, gardening, cooking, business, business management, and that include tax as well business management and tax. So that would be, for business, we have two categories there and we can just uh, put them all as business. So that's one, two, when I include cooking, three for gardening, four for finance. But I would say it's five because tax is uh, tax and business management. But anyway, so that is how I chose my content categories. And in some way, I can compare that to product product as well. And I will say that will be content miss. So that's the length of my content miss, replacing product with content. So that is the length. And those are what I doubt content and compensate. But if you choose one category to publish information about, your strategy might be different from mine. But because I have five categories to work with, now I'll go to the next step in my process. But again, I chose those so that I'm not bored. And because when I'm um, publishing information after a while I ask myself why am I publishing the information and after multiple iteration I came to that conclusion that I like to share different ways to save money and different ways to make money to reach our financial independence or uh, to reach your financial independence 
where you do not depend on an employer to provide for your family, to provide for your needs. So that's it. And that is the, 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 um, the why. So when I'm talking about gardening, there is a garden in a way, in it for a, with a reason, not just for this sake of gardening, I produce things, I grow things to save money and eat healthy. So that's one way to save money, you know, knowing that when I go in my garden, I can harvest things there to cook for my children is in some way, I do not depend on my employer to provide for my family. When I can go in my garden and harvest things there and make a meal we fit. So, yeah, now that, you know, you, we choose our content category, reads, and those are now categories that change really for my content strategy. At least I chose things that I can, I know that I can produce content for a long period of time without getting bored and and over time, I will have a library of information related to those categories. So it is a long-term project for me. But again, your strategy will be different from mine or might be different from mine. And I don't like to, I'm very um, gener gen generalized type person. I don't like to specialize on one things and one things only. So now that we have our content categories, we will choose the topic. So how to choose content topic for each category? And for the content, for the topic, it can vary year by year. So for instance, for 2024, um, I learned to swing trade. Therefore, for finance, I chose swing trading as a topic to talk about because they, my, my, my reason with that is because I just learn it and I'm doing it, I will be able to cater for beginners and maybe down the road I may not explain things in a basic way for people that just start out to understand it so now that I learn it I can use some terminology that can make sense to a beginner so therefore I include in trading in 2023 I use uh, I I we we invest in dividend stocks in 2023. Therefore, 2023, we have dividend stocks investment in the finance category. In the finance category. So the, the topic for the year in in my case can vary so for finance i chose because i know that okay i'm going to publish one content a week and i have 52 weeks content to create to split between five categories that mean each category has 10 spa for the year that's how i broke it down so now under each category, I need to choose a topic or a stop topic. So I choose swing trading under finance. So we have the different topics that we can approach within finance. And I know that even though we have um, spend less, uh, we have budgeting, we have um, how to build your food supply on budget, we have dividend stocks, we have swing trading, I know that I need to pick one for the year because I have 10 content to create for it. So I chose swing trading to work with.
So to, to pick pick for the year, I can put swing trading there. And when we go to gardening, under gardening, and the way, so I took swing trading because that was a new skill I was learning and I wanted to start sharing my knowledge related to that. Another way that you can choose the topic is to look at your um, your YouTube um, analytics and then find the, the top 10 to give you an idea, your best performing videos if you are already creating videos. And I think this process of creating one year of content calendar might work for somebody that is already creating content, not a brand not a person that just started because I started creating content, uh, video content since 2000 at the since end of 2019. But then I was writing blog articles since 2014, and but I was doing the blog article on and off or stop, and then went back for it. So, and now I'm combining the video content and the blog content together to have. Like create one content, um, one topic, create a video for it, create an article for it. So, and by um, looking at um, the garden session, for instance, I know that I have questions. People ask me questions regarding Egyptian onion. So, the topic is perennial gardening and I select perennial spice spices as the soft topic for the year and underneath that as I chose Egyptian working onion and garlic growing garlic as a perennial as content under gardening in fat and under uh, growing uh, garlic as perennial I can't divide it in two to, um, to specifically focus on garlic green. So I chose two topics under gardening. So that means 10 spots that I have there will be divided in two between the two subtopics, if that makes sense. So now we'll move to um, cooking. So under cooking, we do have multiple topics that are uh, subcategories there. But then I chose sourdough starter to focus on in 2024. And, they, and there are two reasons for that. I created sourdough starter, how to make sourdough starter back in 2020. And it has been in my top 10 And I created those starter uh, video in 2020, and usually it is within our top 10 um, videos in the video, um, like, uh, yeah, in the analytics. So therefore, it is, I mean, Focusing on content that are ranking high or uh, are most viewed in your among your content and create additional content related to that could be a good strategy. Or recreate those content depending on um, the seasonality of the information. It is another. So in my my top Ten or uh, uh, contents. I know that tax information is high on it. Therefore, I create uh, tax return business tax return content on a yearly basis. So, and that is already okay. So I know that those content are great year after year. They already have a spark on my content calendar. So now. So the starter is among the top few as well. So in 2022, at the end of 2022, I created 
a, a video, I create multiple videos related to how to create Sado Starter using Unbleached Flower. But I didn't publish it in 2023. So we do have those. And I decided in 2024, I'm going to publish them. So I created multiple videos related to Sado Starter. Therefore, they are going to be occupying. So I chose Sado Starter to be what we are going to focus on. So if we go back to topic uh, pick, uh, topic picked for the year, that's row 11, we'll choose Sado Star. Okay. And this row 11, we can make it bold or we change the color. Under business, we have our task return, and those tasks return are going to have the spa. So, and then we have different sources of income that we are not going to do anything about that. So the thing is, the first four months of the year, I focus on task, task information, task content, and then I decided that once a year, I'll publish something related to once a month, I'll publish something related to tasks. So, business management, we have manage your business. So, those are the content, the topics. But for, for um, 2024, I like to focus on bookkeeping. So, instead of writing it down, We'll write it down later, but that will so th that's how we selected our content, our topic for the year by p taking into consideration what is already performing well on our channel to create content related to, to them or redo them and taking a look at what we already have. A content creative or for already but not yet published to see if we can schedule them to be on on um, for the year and then what we are passionate about that we want to share information about like in the swing trading we, to include that as well so now that we select the subtopics the next step will be how to find content ideas. So we have the content, the topics we want to um, create content for. So how to find the content ideas. I like to do it manual, manually. So what I like to do is if I go to Google, for instance, Let's take an example here. I have um, my keyword. We can just use business idea and um, and we are doing content calendar. So I can go to Google and then I can just type the topic as content calendar and see what is showing up. So I have content calendar and I will see what is really related to what I'm trying to achieve. So there is templates, there is template Excel and I can just first just click on the content calendar. If what is suggested by Google meets what I have in mind to share information on, then I will tap it on my spreadsheet. So, and then, so that will be the suggest 
the suggested research. Then I will scroll to people also ask questions. So how do I create a simple content calendar? What is the best content calendar to use? Okay, so, and it does not really meet what I'm looking for, but you can see that there are four questions there. So when I click on it and click, it's going to add more to it. And then I'll keep reading it, how to create a content calendar in Excel. And that, for instance, is a question somebody is asking. So I will go to my spreadsheet and I will add it there that how to create a content calendar in Excel. But I still feel like who is asking this question might have another idea in mind though, compared to what I'm trying to do here. So then I will go to and then I, it's not just a content calendar that I'm trying to do, but one year content calendar then I will see what question people are asking okay how do I create a content calendar for the year I like that what should uh, how long should your content calendar be how do I okay so how do I create a content calendar for the year? I like that as well because that's in some way that's what I'm doing. So I will write that down. How to so I pretty much like to write down um questions that I have answered for calendar for the year. And then, and if I want more questions, I will click on that. So, how in Word, uh, how do I create a 12 month calendar template in Word? Okay, in Excel, and you get the idea. What is the most common use? format for the content calendar okay so and then i will just keep doing that for the topic so another things that i could do as so i will write the topic and then i will see questions that are suggested and people also ask questions and then i can leave space and then pull a to see what will, will um what will be suggested c just um, D, and if the subject, what is suggested is something that related to what I'm trying to share information about, I'll take note of that. So another way I like to do that as well is go to YouTube, and then I'll put one year content calendar, so one year content calendar planning, content calendar for YouTube, content calendar for beginner, how to set up a content calendar, how to plan a content calendar. So what I like to do here is I like to take a screenshot and then I can have a set and then I will type what I think is work is related to what I'm trying to do. So one year content calendar planning it is quite appropriate. So, one year content calendar planning because YouTube, the search will disappear when I click out of it. I like to use a screen capture. So, it does not work every time, but it might take me a few trials to do that. And then I will screenshot it and I screenshot it and then I will have it and then I can bring my spreadsheet and I will 
um, fill my spreadsheet. So that's how I um, find content ideas. And when I'm doing that, I will write down things that are related to the topic that I already have answer for. So content calendar for YouTube, it will work as well. And those I, content ideas are already tags already as well. So how to plan for how to plan a content calendar? It is how to plan a content calendar. I'm putting those comma because they, they are tags for me at the same time. So how to set up a content calendar? is that as well so and just like the way i did it on google then i'll leave space and then i'll put the alphabet and you do that all the way to z b content calendar blog okay c d and so forth and then after i hit z i will come back i'll leave space and then I'll start with A, how to set up a content calendar. I'll put B, it could just be lower too. There's nothing there. C, D, content calendar for YouTube, 30 day, um, okay. E, F, Content calendar, Google calendar. So, J for instance. But, and, and you get the idea. So, and then I'll just write down what I know the answer for already. So, now, So now that we know how we found our content calendar, our content ideas, and I just do that manually and just record them. So how to record your content ideas? I just use a spreadsheet and just like the way I showed you earlier using content calendar as an example, I will just record them on in the spreadsheet. You can use a a category by by sheet or tab and if I go to swing uh, finance and I look for swing trading I did the same strategy for swing trading and I pretty much you can see the alphabet showing up after the topic that I search, swing trading, all the way. And then the alphabet studying the topic of swing trading as well. And from that, I even find subtopic from that topic that I felt like searching them and see specific questions that are asked that I have the answer for. And after doing that for, and I, and I just record those search, and that gives me a library of questions that I can answer, I can create content to answer. And if we go to the business management session, there is bookkeeping that I like to focus on. And I don't know if I will go with bookkeeping or raw material or inventory management. Uh, uh, inventory management. 
or bookkeeping for small business is going to be vague enough that I can include inventory management and bookkeeping in Excel in it. So I can pick the topic as bookkeeping for small business and and pretty much when I go to YouTube, even though I already have those search, I did those search in Google and I have them, I can bookkeeping for small business. And then I'm going to click on it. So when I click on it, Then I will see if it's going to give me other suggestions. So bookkeeping, job no experience. Bookkeeping, journal entry. So bookkeeping services is not really what, what I'm really want to create information for. So I will just keep doing that and get more specific. So and how do I track, how do I keep track of small business expenses in Excel? So I'm just going to go through, um, and I have some in um, in bold already, that, that means I target them, and I will just, you know, go through them to see what I want to create content for this year one thing i will that's pretty much how i record my content ideas and for each category i need about 10 a year but as you can see i have multiple multiple um content ideas and then if each if i go to Task, for instance, each time I'm creating a content or a new content, I will search the topic and I will record the answers because I, I will need the tag for the content. And I just research the people also ask uh, uh, questions and um, questions suggested by the search, and I do that in. Pinterest as well, and I just record them, and then I'll highlight some that I want to create content for, but pretty much, and some of them are already a, um, a different way of saying the same thing, so there will be a tag for that class, that category, if, you know, is the same question phrased differently. Type. But yeah, that's how I create, I record my content ideas. I have them already. Now I want to pull contents out of them to create one year of content calendar so that when I'm going to create content, I can look, I can, I can look back at that and see, okay, I need to create this next and so forth. That way I don't create content without strategy behind it. So another thing I like to take a look at uh, content that I already recorded or created without publishing yet. And I have a lot of those. And frankly, those are already enough to cover an entire year. Because uh, information related to start, though, start, I won't be able to publish them all this year. Because if I already have 10 spa for them and I'm publishing it once a month, I mean, I publish all of them. And that's that. So, and that is before 2023. And in 2000, what is highlighted are things that are already published. So, I have content in recording in 2023 that I have not published yet. And some of them could become sensitive, and some of them may not. So, I will look at that as well for the categories that I already have to see 
what I need to pull out of here to add to the content calendar. That way I know the spa that I have left to create content for. Another reason why I would like to have one year of content calendar is I like to set a routine to create, to record video once a week. That way it becomes a routine for me and I can keep improving my content creation skill. So even though I have Even though I have um, con um, I have content created already that I have not published yet, I could focus on editing so that I can improve my editing skills, but I don't want to go multiple months without creating content. And, and then I, I just want to keep recording content to keep improving myself in that area while i'm trying to see the right balance between creating content and editing content and publishing content what i can manage with everything that i'm i'm doing in my business and talking about that when you have a business there are different things you do in your business and and I try to have um, to design a business structure for mine, but I think multiple, I think business small, even a small business will have multiple of those uh, divisions or department in the, in, if your, your business, even if it's small business, you'll have multiple of those divisions, you, even if you do not label them as such. So it's not just about content creation so i try to you know see how many hours it, it takes me to perform some task and see all the tasks that the that are required in the business as a whole not that every single division require my attention on a daily basis or on a weekly basis but know the big picture and see and then over time fill out the different functions or tasks performed underneath each each um, division or department so as you can see if uh, from here we have the CEO that includes communication management execution business administration so and I include this CEO to compensate all the divisions in the business and I'm the president of our business. So the COO, the chief officer, or the chief operation officer, uh, uh, function include management of daily business operations. And underneath that, we have operating management. And operating management, that include production and manufacturing and under production and manufacturing we have content creation in in this example and for content creation we have video uh, we have uh, video content we have blog articles we have free download product that we create and then we have product creation we have physical product we have digital product so and under and that is operating a uh, production and manufacturing so now under production management that include operation and manufacturing we have i uh, include photography because for the products we have photography to do even though i try to include them under content creation they have their department so the department that create those things so if you recall video you have the you have videography department so if you you take pictures you have photography department whether you label it like that or not so we have videography we have planning and processes so that is creating manual um, and we have content product business goal so pretty much like processes and we have that department within it and that end for the uh, operate 
production management. So, but under the COO, we have research development, whether you label it or not. So you have keyword research, which I just show you that I was doing for the content creation is research. If I'm looking for a new product line to launch or improve an existing product, that's product, that's research development. So it does have its own department you have you have quality control you have analytics so i talk about youtube analytics that's research development there and then you have marketing and marketing when i talk about pinterest that i do search on pinterest to know how i will tarot my pins and and even to create a board to publish those content that are created to market the articles that are published on our website so it's in some way marketing related so when we are writing product description to list products we will um write product description in a way with search engine uh with yeah certain engine optimization in mind so copywriting is marketing related there so you have sell i have pricing product pricing orders packaging included there client support so we have content and product i have email that i have to go through comment that i have to answer review feedback and legal so entity creation anti entity renewal and those are not everyday things it like online store blog website and creating the website or improving it or, ma or maintaining it is something that i review and at this point i'm working on a process i'm trying to improve uh ninasop.com the website redesign the the categories there for that that would be uh, that will fall under it we have human resources do you labor or not when you are thinking about you know uh, training that new skills that you want to learn or something that you want to create and you are thinking about how you are learning how to do it a new product how to create a new product so training will fall under hr if you like you saw things for instance and you you are thinking about buying air purifier to purify air in the office that's safety if it can fall underneath um human resources like right now i'm i'm running a, a electric heater which sometimes sometimes is making noise in the video but it's just cold in the office so i'm running it and usually I'll turn it off before I will record, but I keep it on just at a lower degree. But again, it's safety there. People working, they need to work in a safe environment. So it's there. Human resources, how to manage people working, including yourself in the business. So procurement, purchasing, shipping. My husband um, is a part of the business as well, but he doesn't really like to work in the business. But I noticed that he's fine buying for the business and shipping things for the business so i just keep that section that division for him and then we have finance which will include budget accounting inventory management tax so and it, it follows underneath and so now we end with the coo and we have the cfo chief for a financial officer which include cash flow financial planning and taxes so those are you know them and all of them are under the ceo umbrella so having that structure allows you to know that you have as one person working in your business you are all you are the director for all those departments in your business. Therefore, you know, it's not just products that you are creating, but you are managing the entire business. Therefore, yes, even though the content creation is just a small portion of the entire things, it's not the most important. Every single one of those departments is important because they, they 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 help your business survive so if 
you do not do anything finance related in your business or tasks related in your business or bookkeeping related to your business you neglect it completely for one year you'll have problem filing your business tasks and it could pretty much put your business in in trouble in some way so it may not make you money but it's important for your business survival so every single area of the business is important whether it is the portion making the money or not is supporting the portion making the money survive and thrive so yeah knowing all of that I wanted to see uh, I want to record a video once a week so that I can keep improving on that and my problem is now um, content creation uh, being consistent at creating content but is being consistent at publishing content so because I noticed that in 2023 I was consistent um publishing content i was now consistent creating content because i can go few months without actually recording any content because i have content that uh cool that i was using i was publishing so and then i was recording but i was now recording on a weekly basis because i didn't have to so in 2023 we recorded many content we published many of them but the ones that are now highlighted are the ones that i didn't publish so we have a lot of them even though i was now recording consistently now in 2024 I start recording as well and I have content from 2022 that I not published yet but what I noticed is in 2024 I started now to publish content consistently because I want to improve the editing of the content and some content not all of them some content i'm editing them and it can take me multiple days to finish it because i only work about two hours a day in the business or on the business therefore i have not found a good strategy yet that is uh, that is helping me find a good balance because we are all different and i tend to have a schedule that is fixed even though based on certain situation i might stop everything and focus on one thing and get it done when there is a due date to focus on i tend to have and then later i can go back to my schedule so i tend to have a schedule that is fixed that i can just follow that way i won't have to keep recreating a schedule year after year or month after month that, but that's just the style that works for me therefore i'm trying to find a balance and it is not the schedule that dictate what i do but what i do dictate how i update my schedule if i do something and i feel good about it or i felt good about it and i know that i can keep this as a routine then i will include that in my routine so trying to find a routine i'll include that in my schedule so try to find a routine that i can build my schedule around is 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 the challenge right now i have the schedule but i want to update it i want to because i'm falling off of my routine i want to update it so i want to start editing some videos but not too much but find the balance because since 2019 i'll create video without editing it and publish it and it works for me but I'm trying to see, okay, how can I edit a little bit but not too much and still create content and do everything else? So, 
include something in my routine will make my place shift a little bit so i have to find the right balance that can work for me i can consistently create i can edit what i want to edit and i can consistently publish so find that balance i'm struggling with it right now it might take a while before i can find the right balance after i try different things different strategy but for sure i feel like i want to create a content once a week and right now i'm thinking about sunday create content i don't know when i put this here but it seems to be the routine because i'm now working on pod right now creating video content in the morning i've been doing it for a for a month at least or so and i like it but i think i wrote these things down here probably since 2023 or beginning of 2024 i'm not sure but yeah and i want to have that consistency but when you are trying to set a schedule and you put multiple things um on one spa you may not be able to achieve them but when you find a spa for everything in your schedule you will be able to follow it better and when you are trying to do that is where you will see the challenge that you do not have enough time to assign time for every single things but they have to be assigned so knowing the task again that's why i try to 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 um to define the business structure and the task perform so that i can actually because i noticed that my content creation i'm not having consistency in it therefore i need to break down the task included in that um, perform within uh, that department even though photography and videography are uh, even research and development are uh, uh, in sync with the content creation process or participate in it i need to um to list the task and be able to assign time for it to be able to see how it's going to fit within my schedule and that's how i went and i put down that yes i do do keyword research and when i'm doing that it can take me about two hours the beauty of that is because i have a library of it i won't keep doing it because when to create that library your content research when you are creating a content you can do a search on that topic and record those questions and when you have 10 of those questions you have enough for the year in this category when i need 10 spa for each topic so but it can take me one hour easily when i'm writing those things i'm searching and i'm writing i'm searching and i'm writing and i like to do it so i like to do it manually i don't use any tool for it so content video content to batch record okay and and while we are here, we might be, don't know if I wanted to talk about this or talk about that at the end, but how to batch record videos. What I found that is working for me is to talk about the same topic or um, to choose topic related. I'm just going to go pull an example. Uh, I try to record a video and when I record the video what I try to do in advance is I know that I'm going to do daily chart analysis then I ask myself what are the questions that are related to that that I can answer and how to draw lines on a chart because i know i'm going to draw the line when i'm analyzing the chart so that's something i can create a video on so how to create how to draw line on a chart on think of swim do you have any particular time of the day you prefer to place a trade how many stocks to swim trade a day so those are related that i know i can answer when i'm doing 
this recording so what i did is when i record the video and the reason why i like to batch record and those are smaller questions to answer they are not long question long answer question so questions so i chose a main topic that can be a longer one and then i chose few questions that are short will require short answers to answer and i like to answer them toward the end of the video so that it's easy for me to spot them at when i pull the the video to uh, an editing software i can go to the end find them there and then cut them out to save them separately so I'll have the main video that will include the answer for those questions. And I would like to create a PowerPoint presentation and put the questions in it because I do not memorize. I'm talking about something that I know. I will put the questions so that I can answer them. I can read them and answer them. And so I create a PowerPoint for, and then put those questions in them as in it. And then I recorded the video. So I ha usually when I'm done, automatically I will cut, but I didn't cut it because I ran out of um, memory. And because I ran out of memory, then I need to do research to find a memory to buy and a national drive to buy because I do not, I do not cloud save my thing. So, and again, if we go to our business structure, on the IT, and my her husband help with that as well, because he's the one that is going to uh, purchase. I did some search, he did some search about soft um, data and information storage. So that is something that you will think about, whether you choose cloud or save on your computer, uh save on an snow drop that's ic department and the new software free or paid that you want to uh, install on your computer that's it department so whether you label those in your business or not you do have those department and it took me quite a bit of time to search and and find the the memory that the external drive that i want to purchase we are using one I'm using um, one since 2024 Seagate and it lasts about three years or so and for TB and the space is low therefore I cannot really record a lot of things on it and now we are thinking about 22 TB we order we have not received it yet but yeah so I so I didn't want to you know make too much that I won't be able to save so I just save the main video and leave it like that but the main video at the end of it my ending my parting word I know that I will cut that as well and I will add it to each one of those sub video clip videos so from one video I have one two three four video created and the reason why I like to do that is for short videos for instance turn uh, turn the camera off and turn it back on to start the next video at the beginning of the video because I'm an introvert there is a little bit of anxiety few seconds of anxiety or starting start starting that i might have or do before i will get into the the video so that for instance for for this video i started and then i wait a little bit too long before seeing the next sentence so i just cut it and started over again it does not happen often but I mean, that's something that I could have cut out if I want to edit the video. But if I don't want to edit the video, I don't want that to be in it. And it happened right at the beginning, the first 
maybe the first minute within the first minute so i just end the video and start it again but yeah so when i'm i'm recording the main video answering those questions in the video toward the end it's kind of easy because i don't have to start it again and have that anxiety because i'm an introvert it's so having that anxiety and doing it over and over and over to create four video is just too much pressure on my body so therefore i just prefer to create a long video that will that will encompass it if i'm saying it well but that will encompass um <laughs> and that will include um the other questions because they are related and but then i'll cut them out another thing that is easy for me to do is while i'm recording the main video i will say something and i did it in this video because i asked myself do i need to talk about how to batch video because i think that's an information that i can actually reserve from for the end and cut out to make a video by itself but then i say you know what? i'm just going to talk about it so when i mention something while i'm recording the video that that refer to some a, a, a topic that i plan to create a video about or not so i will ask myself do i need to do i want to talk about it right now because when i talk about it it will be very smooth because i mention it and then i say okay so in case you are you are wondering what that is and then i will explain i'll I will explain that portion that subtopic but then later i had to listen to the whole video looking for that information to cut out so i've found that it's easier for me when even when i brush up when i mention a topic a subtopic in the video and instead of going in and explain about it way to do it at the end so that it's easy for me to locate that information cut it out to make it another video with it if that makes sense so yeah and that's what i did in few time i struggled with that i wanted to approach the subject when i talk about it because that would be a very smooth transaction uh, but then i waited toward the end and i approach those questions answer them it'll, they'll be easy to find it and put out the next thing is to file your your recording properly and record the video you you recorded so i like to have a spreadsheet to record the video that i recorded and where i save them and the clips that i can pull out of that video so and, and that's how i batch create at least the new strategy that i'm using in 2024 I don't have to change my brain power to talk about different topics when I'm batch creating. I will create, I will pull questions that are already on my uh, library of questions that I want to answer. And I will read through them. I know what the I want to create a question that I want to create content for and I will see related content that I can related questions that I can answer when I'm creating that content and then I can just highlight them or make them in blue that mean I already record them but and then you know that so I'll pull those put it on my um my log and then put it on a powerpoint so that I make sure I answer those questions. And then I'll save the video, put it to a editing software and clip those videos out. And I have multiples like that, that I already did as well. Usually when I batch create and the video you can see this one trading journal and you when i include all those information in one video the video will be long but then i'll clip those out 
as well and I'll file them in the uh, appropriate folders. So one video and I make nine videos out of it by just answering those questions. And the main video, I split it in two. I cut, I cut a portion out of it. That will be this one and this one. So cut the, I cut two portion out of it. And because they want to listen to it, it just makes sense to, to save both. And but yeah, that's how I'm batch creating videos this year. Make sure things are related, and then I take notes because, for instance, to do I have this here video to make now, yeah, done so. Um, trade expense journal entry. So, when I'm going to make this video what are the questions that are related that i know that i'm going to come across that i can just take time to create content for right away and they are already on my spreadsheet so trading journal spreadsheet how many quantities should i buy on a single stock of a single stock for trading how much do you how much do swing trader make per month because i'm going to be working with a spreadsheet i can just show the monthly record swing trading daily profit is already on the same spreadsheet i can create content for that as well so yeah and um, but yeah that's pretty much the main video in mind and the related questions that I can create content and to batch create all of them at once. Answering those questions in the video and cut them out later. The depression will be at the beginning to start and then I will just, because I'm talking about the same thing the whole time, I'm already immersed in it. I will be able to answer those questions and then cut them out, make vid separate videos separate thumbnails, separate tarot and separate descriptions and uh, for, for each one of them because the main video will answer those questions but when the when somebody search they may not know that the answer is in that video and the answer is somewhere in the video in that video so pulling them out and create a video f f specifically for those questions yeah is how i batch create videos now so now when we go back to our business structure that's why i want to create video once a week so that i can improve my skill on that and you can see the strategy that i used to batch create video i can build a library of video created so now my strategy is to make sure i'm not creating content that's time sensitive so that because i have a backlog i should call it video from 2022 now year uh, publish i want to be more strategy that's why it's important for me to have the content calendar and maybe the content calendar will include 2025 as well because i already have a lot of content that i can lean on for 2024 but i don't want to stop creating content 2023 i can go months without creating content because i have content that i can just pull and publish so i was consistently publishing once a week but i didn't have to create content but this year i want to keep creating content once a week and keep publishing content once a week so i really have content that i can publish i'll need to write articles for it create thumbnails create pins for those so those are the things that i need to do for to publish contents that i already have recorded but at the same time i want to be able to continue creating content so now i have to be more strategic 
about it and make sure I'm creating content that are not time sensitive. Like tasks, for instance, I will create things that for 2023 or for 2024 because I'm using form that has date on it. So I had to be more strategic about what I'm creating that I know that I'm not going to publish this year so that it's not time sensitive, but it's an information that people can keep looking for because I create educational content. So even though I'm working on 2024 calendar year, I must well create 2025 calendar year. But I want to know if there is a spot, if there is a spot on 2024 calendar year that I do not have content create content already created for or that way I know that I need to create that content. Otherwise, every every Sunday video that I will create, it will be for 2025, for instance. So I need to have a content calendar so that I just don't create content that I may not use right away either. I don't know if it makes sense. For instance, I'm creating how to create content calendar. I don't know when I will publish it, but it's because, you know, I know that I know that I need to create my content calendar for the year. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to record it while I'm doing it and explain it. And that is the process. So now that we talk about that, so I'm using content that I already have created and content that is performing well on, on YouTube for us to complete our content calendar to see the spot that we need to create content for. So now that we talk, let's put some example in here. So we have the swing trading that I already put in and, I, and the way I put the swing trading stocks content for the year in is I just didn't use, let me see, I just didn't um, pull the content library that we have. I just didn't focus on that. I have already a lot of content ideas on that. But while I'm learning the skill, and that's a tip for you as well, when you are learning a skill and you know that that's a skill that is related to things that you like to share and you might share how to do, how to learn that skill later, you might want to take a note of questions that you are asking while you are searching information. That way later, when you are going to create content, those are the questions you should create content for. And take note of content that you didn't find enough information while you are doing your search. Pinpoint those because you will be creating content to answer those questions yourself. So when I was learning swing trading, I started in November. I was asking questions myself. I was asking questions. I started broad and then, yeah, well, I walked from right to left and went back to right for feature. But again, you can see that's an example of feature. I wanted to get into feature. I was not sure, but then I kept asking some questions and I'm taking note of those questions as I was asking it in case I got into feature and I'm going to create content for feature, those are questions that I was asking that I would want to create content for somebody that might have those questions as well. So I have questions and then I kept searching and I kept no narrowing down my search all the way to pinpoint what I really want to know. Because I'm very generalized that person and I learn different skills. I like to learn different skills so that it's not so much about the money, but it's more about learning different skills so that when I'm in, in any situation, I can assess 
the market, see what is in demand, look at my skill to see what skill I can tap into to provide for myself and my family. So it is not about making a lot of money and sit down and not working, but it's for me, it could be because I'm green and gold type person. So now I'm changing content again, but person, uh, some scientists, um, interpret personality by using color. So we have, um, orange, blue, gold, and green for colors. Orange people, they are adventurous. They are competitive. They take risk. Blue people are people centered. They are passionate, compassionate, and empathy, empathetic, empathy. But anyway, they are people centered. I think they are a little bit trusting as well, a little bit too trusting. You have the gold. Gold are goal oriented. Gold, goal oriented. They are. They, I think they like structure. But anyway. And then you have the green. Green are research based learning. So, and so based on scientists, the first two color, I think we all have four to balance us, but the first two color that you are high in will, will influence your behavior, how you do things, how you view things. So it will influence your personality. You have those that type, of, that type of personality. So I'm green and gold. Those are the two main, the first two top of my color personality. So green, I like to learn. And I think it comes with the desire to share as well. So uh, teaching. And so maybe that's why I'm more into learning different things, learn different skills. And some way those skills, they tend to, complete each other, complement each other one way or the other. For instance, I learned POD back in 2020. I did a little bit soul feel, but PO, learning to design help me improve my thumbnails based on myself, based on my opinion. My, my thumbnails improved, but I, because I use my POD design skill that I learned to create print on demand <laughs> to create thumbnail for my videos. So yeah. And, and um, taking picture for my blog in some way is helping me to improve my product photography. So different skills in different areas are helping uh, helping my um, you know I helping me um, improve in some other area of my business so if that makes sense yeah so Maybe that's why I'm feeling like I want to keep recording so that I can keep improving my video uh, content skills, creation skills. So, but yeah, so it, your strategy might be different from mine. But now, so what I did with this though is I came and even though I searched swing trading and recorded a library of like over 100, over 100 of information, the questions people are asking related to trading and go, went even more specific, writing them down. can see that's and then I want to Pinterest to search it there to see what Pinterest people are asking on Pinterest as well by looking at the suggested 
So that is over a hundred, well over a hundred of questions there and I only note down questions that I have answer that I have answers for and some of them are kind of similar to though so don't be great for tax that's why I put tax on some of them because repetition are in it as well they're not like individual different questions but then those are questions that I can recreate content for tarot differently and those technically those questions are the title of my videos as well in some way but yeah and then so having those here i just don't want to create content picking questions here that i want to answer i compare them to questions that i was asking myself as a newbie and those are the questions that i was asking myself i was asking online on youtube to find information i pair that with content that I, I already create so I know that I create quite a content in 2024 I create content for swing trading and that is pretty much what we are looking at here anything on that finance will be related to trading I create a lot of content here already, more than one year worth of content already. But then I ask myself, okay, so I need to organize it properly. So what are the questions that one way to do is what are, what are the questions like organize the questions in order that a new be a beginner will would want to know the information that's one way but then but I was going more with the question that I was asking and the content that I created that I asked that question myself already I was pairing them with it if that makes sense so those are the video created those are to answer the question in the right colon I think I'm not writing things well here um, no <laughs> okay anyway yeah right so to answer those questions so and I'm just trying to so this one is which chart to use that's the way I put it which chart to use so the video uh, and on on the keyword things it was time frame that people are searching uh, I search what time what chart to use so yeah so i try to pair because i was using the keyword to create content like i was using the question ask to create content now i try to compare that to question that i was asking myself when i was learning the skill to see which are those questions that I was asking myself? Which are those questions that I already created a content for? And then I was writing those content that I created. I was writing them down next to the question that I know that I answer in that video. And by doing that, one, no, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight there. So I copy those videos question ask and put it on my calendar or uh, maybe I should do it but I think I did it so when we look we have swing trading best times frame time frame for swing trading and I believe we published that already.
time frame for swing trading. So yeah. But pretty much that is the question on the swing trading chart analysis. So if we go back to um, our question that swing trading chart analysis. So for that, we have how to analyze chart for swing trading. And how to analyze But yeah, those questions, I try to make sure they are exactly how people are asking the questions. And I might combine two questions together. Uh, so it depends. Or I might add my own way of, like the one that I copy and paste earlier, the way I asked the question was, um, I added to it. It was multiple way to phrase the same question. But chart analysis but yeah that's pretty much it so and then daily chart analysis so yeah so pretty much what i will do is i will go in this is just putting the um the questions that the, the video that I recorded and usually when I record a video I tend to already use the question that is asked exactly the way it is asked or uh, uh, then later I'll go back and see the phrase used to use that phrase properly or modify if I want to modify it. but yeah and I will pretty much do that so that I have some consistency but I, again, take into consideration the question that I was asking myself to see the one that I really create content for and, and use them to include in the content calendar. So chart analysis is the second one there. Okay, so I'm not even done adding things to it. So we have 10 spa. We can just work on it together. So, and time frame, time frame. Let's see the one. I'm surprised though. I thought I. We are working on the right one. Yeah. I thought I have ten. Uh, maybe this I thought I I did this one as well but clearly I didn't do it okay so swing trading chart analysis so how to analyze how to analyze chart for swing trading I'll go back to my keyword chart analysis I have daily chart analysis here how i can look for c or i can look for analysis for swing trading how to analyze chart for swing trading this is the term used and I like to make sure the one that I have there didn't come from uh -huh. 
how okay so it's not from here therefore i will use this one chart analysis for swing trading i will come back here and i will look for video for three chart analysis And that will be this one. So the tarot, one thing I can do is just put it in it. And I will go back to here. I'll put it there. And in my content calendar, I will put chart analysis for swing trading. And what was there before was swing trading chart analysis. Either one will work. And I think swing trading chart analysis I'll keep it this way. Okay. So and I don't know, here I can just put 2024. That way I know that it is published, it will be published this year for that one. So the next one will be how to decide, how to decide entry and exit in swing trading. So I'd like to see if there is a specific question You can see it's kind of long to go through that long list. That's why I have some subcategory specifically. How do you decide entry? So I'm going to copy it. How do you decide? And I'll go to my content calendar. It will be the third one. And here I can make it in blue. And then I can put 2024 there. How do you? So, so this answer the same question. So that will be the same thing. Okay. How do you decide? That's the same thing as well. When to sell stock? When to buy stocks? What? Is the buyer senior? So I answer that question in this video. All three, I answer those three, and typically, I could create question. I could create content. When to buy socks? If that's a question that people are asking, yeah. Entry and exit. Exit is sell. But anyway, I need 10 spa. So how to create a master list for stocks up trending? I create that video. So but now is it a question how people are asking that question? Do I even have a master list? Research here. Okay, how do I create a trading watch list? So let's go through this to see if you can see uptrend anything related. Of stock so how do I how to create a master list of stock um, here is not really a master list people are calling it but I can go back to
this one and see if there is master list swing trading large cap stock that is thing there uptrend stocks for swing trading those two are related but I'm not seeing okay so how how to create a master list of people are talking more about watch list so if we go back to YouTube, for instance, let's say somebody is, is searching master, uh, master list. Stock master list. People are now, nah, people will be searching more watch lists. stock watch list swing trading swing trading watch list swing trading watch list if we click on it and then we click again so swing trading watch list people are searching that so if we go back and i'm very specific about it so how to create a master list of stock to trade was the question i was asking how to create a master list of stock so up tr trading up trending large okay so that's how i call it but it's not how people are searching it so up trend stock for swing trading How to create a weekly watch list so this one if we go back to this one for some reason I put this date here did I answer that did I create I don't up trend stock so I created a video that one is telling me how to create the master list so this the uptrend stocks is like a list of those stocks so if we go to 425 i do have a video approaching the topic here so i can uh, So how to I know people how to pick stock for swing trading. How to how to find stocks for for swing trading. I think my master list could answer that or how to pick stocks for swing trading. How to find stocks? How to pick stocks would be answering that question. So how to pick stocks for swing trading? 
I will put 2024 he, um, for here and uh, when I go back to here I will add it for the master list that I And when I create that, did I create that video? I'm not seeing any dates there. Oh, that will be the date here of February. Okay. So, and then this one was in January. So, this one will answer the watch list question. How do I choose a stock for my watch list? The first one could answer, how do I choose a stock for my watch list? This, how to pick a stock for sweet trading. You can see how, you know, um, <laughs> Because either how to make a stop watch list in Excel. So how to make a watch list of stock. How do I make my own stock watch list? <laughs> so okay 2024 and we will go back and for the master list I will add that how to pick stocks for my tra swing trading <laughs> that this video will add it will wool how to make a watch list of stocks and it that the this the watch list of stocks is so vague it's now swing trading when this one is specifically for swing trading so and that is the back and forth analysis that i will do to um to find the question that I asked, the video that I created, because I created those videos without actually doing the search first to pick the question specifically and answer it. But now that's how I'm doing it because I already have the questions. I can just go back and pick a question and create a content for. So how many stocks should I have on my watch list? that is a question i could answer to how do i create a watch list of stock for free so i'm not seeing a weekly watch list here and how do i create so and this one, how do I create a watch list of stock for free? I could add it here. And I will put 2024. And those could change as well. But while I have it, the first one, hold on. When we go back to our content calendar, the weekly one, uh oh. Okay, so something must be 
I need to take that board out of there. But this one, was the one before it okay so we have one two three four five and we need five more swing trading duration so is there a question people are asking Swing trading D D D. Swing trading duration, okay. And this because I read the question here, and then I record it, and then record the content. So I use the terminology exactly the way it is phrased, instead of come on with. The, the phrase myself and record and then I'll try to pair it with a search that is asking that question because I tend to phrase things differently that people ask for so I had to pair both later so now we have and pretty much that's what I will keep doing and this I'm doing it this way because I have questions here that I ask myself and then I have video that I created. So I'm trying to, so I know a beginner might be asking those questions. Therefore, I want to create those, I want to publish those videos first or create those videos first. How many, how many stop to swing trade a day? How many stop to swing trade a day? Is anyone asking that question? And do I even have um, a content already created? One thing I will do though is I have content that I created at the beginning. I have this one here, dividend. Swing trading, position trading. Well, I have a video. People are comparing those those things. I don't think I. I did a search on comparison here. Swing trading versus dividend investing. Okay. So if I copy this, and I create a video, let me see, I can add it in here, and I can copy this, it was January 27. create that content that's one way to publish my earlier content before the the last one if that didn't make sense so do you have any particular time of the day you prefer to place an order so how people are asking that question.
I think I come across that question somewhere. As well. So. pretty much yeah that's what I will take time to go through the question that people are asking because I tend to search those questions myself in a certain way I thought people will search the best sum of the day to swing trade. I'm not finding any record, but I know that I came across that question. But anyway, how long do you hold a swing trade? So we will go back to how long do you hold a swing trade? That's why it, uh, it might be good to have those sub those sub um, topic so that it's easy to categorize those. So. How many to low hold at any given time? How many stocks should it? How many stocks should you trade at once? How many stock? How many stocks should I buy in a single? Okay, so what was the video? How long do you hold a swing trade? How long? How many stock a swing trader hold at any given time does not really answer that question. How long do you hold a swing trade? So those are things that I have, I will search and I can let me see if we search it. How long to hold okay how long to hold swing trade how long to hold swing trade so people do ask that question okay so how long to hold swing trade how long to hold swing trade and when we copy that we can go back to this it was putting it in parentheses so that I know that that is the terminology search and is going to be answering this question of mine I thought I saw oh, okay so driving asked that question how long is chart trend market trend how long so how much amount to spend on it 
so i did ask this question but how long to hold okay sure you hold a okay so that is a specific question here but how long to hold a swing trade was not a question that i asked myself okay so um what question that i ask myself that people are asking them are asking as well where to find stocks to trade did i even record anything like that where to find stocks so this i didn't ask this question myself but people are asking this question so therefore i'm going to okay how long to hold so i uh, so i'll add it here and because it's recorded it's good for me to put the date of the recording that way i will easily find it and i think i had to go i'll go back and add the day for the ones that i have here as well so that it's easy for me to find them alternatively i could use a code here and the code will help me find it as well so i i can i'm trying to do something here but for instance i could use a code those are videos so i can put v 2024 you know what let's not make it too complicated we can put v 02 that's the month 04 that's the day 2024 that's the year <laughs> that would be one way to code those as well that way i can use the code uh, elsewhere and find and use that to find what i'm looking for here to be easy to find things like that and if it's not the first if let me see how many be the one two three so this will be c and this one will be everything b this one will be everything a like instead of c will be b a for those that way i can use those code I'm trying to number the number of videos that I have, but then later I will insert rows, so it will affect the numbers that I'm using here. Using code that is using video as the first letter, and then using the dates in it as the numbers, and then using A for the batch number. I think, yeah, that will work. So but i will just continue comparing what people are asking what i already recorded what a new beginner will ask as question to know which one i will publish first and come up with 10 questions so if I do not have the, uh, if I have not created the video already, then I know there is a spot for that. So, but yeah, I will start with, because there is a long list of questions to ask, it's not what I will start with, but what I will start with is questions that I was asking myself, that I was asking, I was searching to see if I create content for it and to see how people are asking that question. I think it's in that order that I will, I will try to, to match those three document and then finally put it on the content calendar. So I'm, um, okay, which chart time frame do daily analysis stock on a swing trading that's a weird way of formalizing the question but okay so let's see if um i know um um 
must have that would be thumb frame and I already have thumb frame thumb frame on the already that was the first video so this one will be the same as the very top one thumb frame but if I have two video in the matter So, but yeah, this this answer is asked already with the time frame one. So I can just put answered. Okay, already. So what price range stocks to trade? What price range is not range range stocks to trade? Um, when to sell stocks? See, did I even create anything that my first videos there is how long to hold that one we find it how to create a watch list how to create a master list how to keep a trading journal how to keep a trading journal how to keep a trading journal and how what people are asking related to that trading journal trading journal Can I find better than that? Swing trading. Swing trading journal. I can copy it. How to keep how to keep swing trading journal I had to look at that video because this video I have a thing like it will be talking about spreadsheet it will be more the financial aspect than I had to look to see if it's the financial aspect or the journal of the the trade uh, before I can really know what question I'm answering there. But yeah, and how to keep a trading journal. I have another one here, so too. But that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing and create a content calendar. But you get the point so and because i already have um video recorded already i like to see videos that are recorded and questions that people are asking that answer that those videos answer and put them in the in the spreadsheet and and then if there is question that people are asking that i didn't create a video for then I can not not the question and I know that I need to create that video because the one that I created I will add a date so that I know that they are already recorded or I will change the color of them that way they know they are already created and uh, or published and so forth for instance I use this color here because this one not only was created but it was published as well so but and as for this one for instance we need a five 
content and I put two extra there and I'm funny with it and I have five for the other which make it six as well so I have enough content in the program to to work with but pretty much I will first create 2024 list by comparing questions that people are asking to content that I already have a bank of to populate them that way I have no content that I need to create and then I can start 2025 list by adding content that I can create that way when I have a list of content that I can create every that uh, getting close to when I want to record the video I can look and see okay what is the next video that I can create and be prepared for it if I need to create a PowerPoint or if I want to write a blog article ahead of time I can prepare for it if I need to take picture or have screenshot or things like that or capture I can have those things and be prepared for the video instead of thinking on Saturday night okay what video do I need to record today again and that's led to this because I want to record a video and I don't know what video to create and then I say you know I'm going to create video on content calendar because I really need to work on my content calendar to have a list of videos that I can create so that I know so that it's easy for me to to find them if that makes sense I don't have to go through the master list to pick something random there to create but organize them making sure they are not time sensitive so that if I don't publish them right away I know that I'm building my content bank a little by little so I'm learning to batch create video the redefining or fine-tuning that skill and at the same time working on getting the content that I have already recorded ready article written thumbnail design and publish it Cons and be consistent publishing my videos thank you very much for your time and I'm going to continue working on this and see how much more I can add it to it is a learning curve is a process and I did it I started in 2023 and it worked well for me in fact I start design 2024 and that is 2023 And those pretty much are set are things that I can easily copy here and paste in 2024 as well because those are things that I will keep creating year after year. And then I have the content calendar for 2000. In fact, in 2023, I started working on 2024. So 2023 content publish. And then around October, I start designing 2024. So technically, I already start designing 2024, but then I got into 2024, and uh, I and when I have dates in there like that, it means I already I must I already recorded those videos, but. 2024 I'm talking about swing trading so those videos I'm not going to publish them in 2024 and uh 2024 I was talking about I was for cooking I post out those starter because I was thinking about publishing it daily but I'm not able to do that therefore I won't be able to add anything to that category but just start those starter so that was the plan back in October and then Okay, I have 
already some stuff in fact i already recorded those that is a lot i will go through them and the same way that i was doing for the stream trading i will see what question people are asking to match it with the recording that i have that i know that i answered that question in and put that under my, the business side of it and those were recorded and published in spring and i still have some that i didn't publish and since we'll be publishing um about tax throughout the year we will be able to um, publish some of them and then i will record some as well because we have form 941 that will be recording but yeah we do have some questions answered that we didn't publish that i will see what is still relevant that i can publish there on the task area but yeah and yeah pretty much 2024 was designed back in 2023 in october and i should be working on 2025 <laughs> content calendar but i'm redesigning 2024 improving it in some way And some of them are things that I will redo year after year. So this colon will be it. But yeah, and the one in blue color, probably I recorded them. That's why they are in blue for me to know that I already recorded. Yeah. But then I have the content calendar things that I published in 2023 and the order that I published them. I kind of like this structure as well because it allowed me to know, you know, the layout, the way I wanted to be publishing them, like tasks, stock finance, finance, gardening. But this one this year is going to be business, like business management. So, and so, and then um, pretty much when I publish, because that one was 2023, it will be this one. But 2024, as I publish, I need to create that content calendar for 2024 to pretty much rec 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 uh, copy and paste those things that I'm publishing here. I'm calling it business task, but I think I'm just going to call it task so that I can keep business for the other it is business and then this one is cooking and this one is stock finance and this one is garden so those are the category the four categories that i will be working no the fifth one will be business business management so i need to add business management to it so that's what the next topic should be one two three four five so i need to look for um and that's why having a content calendar to have the information in is helpful because if i go back to uh, the content calendar that i was designing in 2023 for 2024 under business management i do have those that i can work with yeah raw materials i can work with them
and I have plenty that I didn't publish. business not the one that I didn't record but the one that I recorded I recorded but I don't have the article written yet so the test is the article but I have plenty here and the best way I can do that is see people are asking that question so for instance to how to enter raw material finish how to enter raw material finished product and sales in inventory so what question people are asking related to that so i can go to business management and and i'll go to inventory session how to put how to record purchase of raw material those questions are specific how do I manage inventory in manufacturing business where my raw material and finished product are different? How to enter raw material finished product and sales in inventory? I compare those two because I know that I answer the question there. How to do inventory for small business how to do how do I do inventory for small business and that is okay. yeah and that is okay Taro how do I use Excel to track inventory. What do I use here? How do I keep sales record in Excel? How do I use Excel to track inventory? It seems like I already said the tarot that I'm going to be using. I already <laughs> said those tarot as well. So uh, how to how do you use Excel to track inventory? So how do you use Excel to track inventory? Well, how do you use Excel to track inventory? So people are asking the question. So that is The tarot that I'm going to be, I'm going to use for it as well. And if we go back to the 2024 that we are creating, and we go all the way to business. Management, business management. I don't think I'm starting things on the thirteen, on the eleven, on the twelve. Yeah, the thirteen is the first one. So yeah, and then I will pretty much do that. And I know that this is because I have the this I have the content. I will go look for the con the video. Play the con the video and write the articles. I like to hand write the article because I'm writer first, video creator second. So I hand write my articles. So I will listen to the video, write the articles, create the thumbnails, the pins, and publish that. But I like to know ahead of time what I'm going to be working on. That's why I need this content calendar completed with 10 topic underneath each uh, category so that 
I know if I really have the content created or if I need to create the content. And if I really have the content created for all of them, then I can open 2025, set the, the, the categories again, that is not going to change, and select the, the topic that I want to talk about underneath each category. The swing trading is going to continue. What is going to be the others, I'm not sure. But then I can start ask, adding questions that I have on my list underneath each category that I want to answer. That way, every time I want to record a video, I just know that I have the videos that I have that and when I'm doing this though, I'll be strategic about it. For instance, if um, if I'm going to create a video related to tracking uh, uh, material in inventory, for instance, I will look for questions that are closely related that I can just answer all of them in one video and then cut those clips out to create separate videos for them. That way I can batch create like that and I will just target two, like the main video and two other related questions, so short question answer that I can answer in that video that is closely related to the main topic that I'm discussing in the video. That way I have a long topic and then I have two other short videos as well. All of them recorded together. Therefore, you know, I will be batch creating both within the same topic at once, if that makes sense. So thank you so much for watching. Well, we work together, but I'm not nowhere. I'm nowhere near done with my content map or content calendar, but I'm going to create it because I need to have a list of content that I can create so that when I want to record video, I know what I need to record and be prepared for it. Thank you so much. I'm Afiavi Libreman, Curse of Libreman Consulting LLC YouTube channel and Nina Soap.com, our blog. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We thank you very much for your comment and thank you very much. You all that subscribe to our channel. Thank you for your time. On our channel and on our website, we share different ways you can save money and different ways you can make money to reach your financial independence where you do not depend on an employer to provide for your family. Thank you.